Hello, and welcome to our website. I'm Dr. Chad Price, Director of the International Hip Dysplasia Institute and a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at the Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children in Orlando, Florida. Hip dysplasia is the most common abnormality in newborn infants, but surprisingly, many people think of hip dysplasia in dogs and are not really aware that it happens in people too. But hip dysplasia occurs in about one out of 20 babies and thousands of adults have silent hip dysplasia that leads to early arthritis. So hip dysplasia can mean a variety of things. Most commonly, hip dysplasia means looseness of the hips during infancy. This can range from mild looseness to a completely dislocated hip. In the adult type of hip dysplasia, the hips are usually stable, but the sockets did not develop properly, and this leads to arthritis from a shallow hip socket. Hip dysplasia doesn't take lives, but it's very common, and the sheer numbers result in a lot of people with disability. This is the most common reason for hip arthritis in young women. The cause of hip dysplasia is not known, but we do know that human babies are not born ready to walk, their hips are poorly formed, and the mother makes hormones around the time of birth that allow the ligaments to become loose. Usually, the hips tighten up after a few weeks, and mild dysplasia often goes away without treatment. For infants, it's important to avoid tight swaddling with the legs straight out. The baby's hips need room to move so that they can grow and develop properly. Hip dysplasia is a silent condition because it can be hard to detect in babies and it's difficult to detect in adults before the hip is painful. Babies with hip dysplasia look normal and almost never show signs of pain even when the hip is completely dislocated. Toddlers can walk comfortably with a dislocated hip but they usually have a mild limp that's just a little more off balance than the average toddler. Routine pediatric care is the best way to detect hip dysplasia because regular examinations are very helpful, but some cases develop after birth from swaddling or unknown reasons. After the age of six weeks, sometimes an ultrasound is obtained, and that can help detect hip dysplasia. After six months of age, an x-ray can detect it, but early treatment is really the key. Early treatment in infants starts with a brace or a harness that keeps the legs spread apart with the hips in the socket while the ligaments tighten up. When hip dysplasia is detected after six months of age, general anesthesia is usually needed to manipulate the hip back into the socket or to perform surgery. Most children who are treated for hip dysplasia recover completely and go on to be active in sports. Young adults can be treated with surgery if the arthritis is still mild but there's a lot we don't know about hip dysplasia and treatments aren't always successful. We need better methods of prevention, detection, and treatment. The International Hip Dysplasia Institute was started with support from Larry the Cable Guy and his wife because they wanted to help people who were less fortunate than their son who had a completely dislocated hip and was successfully treated as a baby. The International Hip Dysplasia Institute has already completed several research projects and has many more underway, but we could use your help to do even more. As a not-for-profit organization, we rely on the generosity of individuals like you. 100% of all donations go toward the great work being done by our physicians around the world. Please consider contributing as every dollar helps us get closer to a potential cure. And please visit our website regularly to share stories, to stay in touch with families, and to read the latest updates about hip dysplasia. Thank you very much.